Student Laureate Program is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. It is a voting theme spoken word poetry competition which merges art and civic engagement in order to energize and empower young voters and is led by NYC Votes and Urban Word USA. Since its inception, the program, the first of its kind, has impacted over 300,000 New York City youth. That deserves a big round of applause. Yes. And has been recreated in 41 cities throughout the country. New York is a leader once again, leading to the creation of the National Youth Poet Laureate Program in 2017. We have celebrated here at mayoral inaugurations, Federal Hall, and the Library of Congress, Kennedy Center, the Apollo Theater, each poet laureate who has published a book of poems. Oh, wow. By providing youth with a platform for creative expression, the Youth Poet Laureate Program promotes critical thinking of self and by extension, a critical analysis of one's role in one's community and government. The program provides a platform for youth to learn about elected officials did you learn anything about us? Oh. <laughs> and community issues. And through peer-to-peer -peer engagement, encourage those around them to become civically engaged. So William is our 2018 Youth Poet Laureate, and he serves as a leader of our city's youth community, a champion voice for the youth vote through community service, performing and speaking, and conducting peer-to-peer -peer voter engagement activities. We want to thank William for his contributions to not only civic engagement, but engaging young people in positive activities and leadership development. We are so proud to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you, and we would love to have some words from you in whatever capacity you'd like to share those words. But I think we all know what kind of words we're looking to hear. But I just want to say, in this climate on education, and we're talking about specialized high schools, and who, who can and who does not attend our specialized high schools, you are certainly a beacon of hope and an inspiration for so many young people to know that Stuyvesant High School, Bronx High School of Science, Brooklyn Tech, LaGuardia, and all of these schools are for all young people of all races and religions. So you are our beacon, and you are our symbol. And we are so very proud of you, and there should be so very many more of you. So continue to shine your light bright, and we are so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the City Council, of course, for this amazing proclamation. Um, I would like to thank Urban Word, my family at Urban Word, NYC, and of course, NYC Votes for always encouraging me and for helping me speak and lift my voice in spaces that matter. Um, and I'd like to thank all of you for being here, for clearly being invested in the future of our city. Um, and before I read a short poem, um, I'd just like to say that there are nearly two million New Yorkers under the age of 18. That's two million voices that do not have a say in who sits in this room. Um, and that's, those are two million people that every single decision that passes through this room has an effect on. And that ranges from decisions like the one made about the SH, that's going to be made about the SHSAT, um, decisions about how we, how we use to engage with transportation, how we are incarcerated, how we are policed. Um, and these are decisions that all have an impact on us. Um, so I would like to th ask all of the city council members present to ask about us, to talk with us, to engage with us, because we have so, so much to say. Um, wow. uh, I'm inspired. Come on up here, Helen. And I was going to read a short poem about civic engagement, but it's very clear to me that every single person in this room knows everything that is at stake um, with all the decisions that pass through here. Um, so I'm going to read a short poem that I think to me encompasses part of the reason that I love New York City and part of the reasons, and the reasons that I am proud to be a New Yorker. Um, so this poem is called, As the City Slept. 
I sit next to a homeless woman in Starbucks. She asks me how I'm doing. I say, all right. She says she got hit by a car in Brooklyn and needs two painkillers for this ache in her leg that won't go away. There is thunder in her voice, roaring up through sidewalks, her breath, the city's breath. She asks me to watch her stuff, walks out with a cigarette, and I watch her unfurl. Stark against the plain air, I see the city coalesce around her, exhaling its breath, rumbling through subway tunnels as it lifts the wreckage from her hips, clears away shattered glass, raises her eyes once again towards the sky, builds a skyscraper out of her body, gleaming, celestial. And they call us the city that never sleeps. But some nights I think I can hear it dreaming in the grit of a brown girl's black teeth, and they forget the city grows tired sometimes, forget a quarter of New Yorkers were slaves once, forget segregation, forget gentrification, forget stop and frisks, forget our names, forget our blood in this concrete. Forget there are days that Lady Liberty, after working double shifts every day for years, needs to blow out her torch and settle down to rest. And we become her dreams. Being hit by a car, having an ache in your leg that won't go away, and still caring about the boy sitting next to you, become her dreamers. Every mother who must become an alchemist, magicking food stamps into meal, every dreamer is New York, is hustle, is standing above subway, great feeling the city hush around you, allowing yourself to hope, and they call us the city that never sleeps. But sometimes, you can tell the city sleeps because we only need step into the moonlight and our bodies will become celestial, holy. And you can hear the city breathe in and out and in. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I've never heard it so quiet in here before. This is powerful. You need to run for office right now. And, and that's not the one that won. Wow. Just don't run against me, but you need to run. <laughs> in Brooklyn, all right, we'll talk. Brad Lander, Brad Lander, watch out. <laughs> Okay, so we are now going to take a photograph with this proclamation. So then are we finished with No, that? no, he gets yeah. this as well. They want two. They want it too. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Here's your second one. I have, I have the poem on the video, so I'll okay. do it up. And this one with your uh -huh. and then the other one is So who do we do now? All right, thank you everyone. We are now going to be joined with Council Member Ben Kalos, who will be honoring the tank. If everyone that is here with the tank, if you could come on up. Wow, all of these amazing cultural individuals.
Good afternoon. I am so proud to be here with the tank, and we are going to be honoring them for 15 years of profound cultural contributions to New York City and for the opportunities it has afforded thousands of original young artists. The Tank is a Manhattan-based multidisciplinary arts presenter and producer dedicated to removing economic barriers from the creation of New York, but of new work by artists launching their careers and experimenting within their art form. It is also committed to upholding its mission in an environment that is inclusive, which is so important, and accessible to all people. So I'm now going to turn the mic over to my colleague, Council Member Ben Kalos, who has brought this phenomenal group forward. And we are so happy to welcome you here, the voices of young people represented by women warriors today. And we're so happy to have you. If my colleagues could join me, that would be phenomenal. I'll now turn it over to Council Member Ben Kalos. Good afternoon. Finding affordable space in the city of New York is next to near impossible, whether it's housing or for performing arts. And so initially we have places like the public theater, but there's really hard to get into that and it really doesn't serve as many New Yorkers as it could. And so many years back I met folks from the tank which was this place that was welcoming all sorts of artists doing all sorts of things. At the time, they were doing something called laughing liberally because at the time, more than a long time ago, we elected somebody we were concerned about. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, and so that's what gave birth to laughing liberally and other acts that weren't going to find a place uh, to perform. Uh, most recently, this group has won pretty much more awards than almost any other theaters. Uh, last time I was there, I saw a puppet of Karl Marx, uh, and it is an award-winning puppet show that they've put together. And now they found a permanent home after years, and so glad, and that home is on... 36th and 8th Avenue. And you can catch amazing shows there, and uh, the shows are back-to-back, -back and they're pretty much 24-7 and it's a, a huge opportunity, and I think they've actually been in the speaker's district for, for as long as anyone can remember. Uh, so I'm just so glad, and we'll turn it over to the uh, clerk to read the proclamation. Council, City of New York proclamation. The New York City Council is proud to honor the tank for 15 years of profound cultural contributions to New York City and for the opportunities it has afforded thousands of original young artists. And whereas founded in 2003, the Tank is a Manhattan-based, multidisciplinary arts presenter and producer dedicated to removing economic barriers from the creation of new work by artists launching their careers and experimenting within their art form. It is also committed to upholding its mission in an environment that is inclusive and accessible to all. And whereas from the start, the Tank has provided a welcoming, creative, collaborative, and affordable environment for performing artists and presenters to engage to engage in the pursuit of new ideas, delivering access to dynamic, cutting-edge programming to the next generation of audiences for live performance and the work of emerging artists. Whether the artists are actors, musicians, dancers, comedians, poets, filmmakers, or artists of emerging media or, and other genres, they have all found an important home and creative hub. And whereas the tank has provided free performance space as well as a suite of other resources, including artist fees for tens of thousands of artists. It has also enabled thousands of artistic projects that would not have otherwise been possible, providing access to artistic, artistic resources and diversifying the voices and stories that can be heard in New York City. And whereas the tank is unique in its creative, collaborative approach, by never charging artists to use the space and always giving them a share of the box office, the tank prizes participation and encourages talkbacks, trainings, and workshops around the performances. As a result, the tank has presented an unrivaled number of new works across disciplines, averaging 400 events a year, all in a setting that encourages collaboration and risk-taking over commercialism or competition. And whereas, like its presenters and producers, the Tank's audiences represent a broad cross-section of New Yorkers who are generally young, curious, and often new to the performing arts. Low-cost admission to all Tank events is a central tenant in its goal to attract a new generation of arts patrons and to inspire audience diversity on behalf of artists 
and the broader arts communities throughout the five boroughs. And whereas, the tank has been tasked with challenges over the past 15 years, but has remained a resilient institution, never compromising the openness of its approach or the quality of its work. Today, thanks to the unwavering commitment of its co-artistic directors, Rosalind Grush and Megan Finn, its staff, curators, board, and advisory board, and many other supporters, the tank remains a one-of-a-kind venue when, where emerging artists can find their voice, where community and risk-taking are valued over competition and exclusivity, and where the newest ideas are refined and developed into the next movement. Now, therefore, be it known that the New York City Council is proud to honor the tank in celebration of its 15th anniversary for its extraordinary cultural contributions to New York City. Corey Johnson, speaker for the entire council. Lori Cumbo, council member, majority leader. Ben Kalos, council member, 5th District, Manhattan. And uh, just in case I get in any trouble for conflicts, I have one production credit in my life, which was doing a Laughing Liberally show at the tank called uh, Pirates of the Bronx, The Curse of Pedro Espada in 2010. Uh, and literally they will take any artist with any crazy idea and if we could turn it over to them to say a few words. This is such an honor for us. We could not do the work that we do every single day without the support of the New York City Council and the Department of Cultural Affairs. The most valuable thing that we bring every day is the ability to say yes to thousands of artists every year who don't have a place to be doing their work. When we see the increasing difficulty of maintaining a performance or cultural space uh, in New York City with the demands of real estate, um, we, are at, we are so pleased that every day we get to serve so many. Um, this year we served over 2,000 artists giving many of them their first opportunity to do their work from all of the five boroughs. Um, I wanna just allow my colleague, Rosalind Grush, to say a couple of words. Um, there has been a quiet deterioration of press around uh, arts and culture in New York City as the focus of press, hi guys, um, has become increasingly political. There is less of an opportunity for cultural programming to rise above the fray, and that has been happening throughout the last couple of years. And so, as that happens, it has a profound effect on small to mid-sized arts organizations who, who really rely on the press to get the word out about what they do. So that has been a struggle that we have seen. Um, we continue to strategize ways around it and help these young artists who have a voice, like the incredible artists we just saw, that need to be heard. These, these people that are just coming out and just getting to do their work, they really need to be seen if, if New York City is going to remain a cultural center. So we applaud the work of the Blueprint, we applaud the work that has been happening in New York City, and we'll just continue to do our part. Thank you, I wanna thank you all for the incredible work you've been doing over 15 years as artists and as women warriors taking this opportunity to let the press know exactly how you feel about the arts and getting the word out, never missing an opportunity. And we thank you for your 15 years of service and we thank you council member Ben Kalos for bringing this extraordinary group to the forefront. Thank you so much and we continue to support you. Thank you, let's take a group photo. Can we have everyone from the incredible group, Teens Take Charge? And here's our council member, Richie Torres from the Bronx. Everyone that's associated and presenting here with Teens Take Charge, this is Youth Day. The youth have taken over City Hall and it's amazing and it's fantastic. And I hope with all of the press that we have here today, they will be able to showcase how dynamic and amazing our young people are. And they are taking over the city. And as our poet laureate said, it's over two million people that do not have a voice in City Hall, but they are getting a voice today. So we are so pleased to have you all here today. Teens Take Charge had its launch event on April 28th, 2017 
just a year ago at the Bronx Library Center with an initial group of only six students. It has grown to more than 60 students from different high schools across the city dedicated to tackling school segregation and proposing policies that promote integration by engaging audiences of more than 300 people all in one year. We should be so lucky as council members, right? They are really doing great work, and I'm going to turn the microphone over to Council Member Richie Torres to say more about this fantastic group that he has brought forward and introduced to City Hall today. Council Member Richie Torres. Thank you, everyone. You know, as many of you might know, May 2018 marks the 65th anniversary of one of the greatest decisions in American history, Brown versus Board of Education. But five years ago, during the 60th anniversary, the UCLA project at, uh, the civil rights project at UCLA found that New York City, despite our reputation for cosmopolitanism and diversity, has the most segregated school system in the country. And so it, it's an issue that had been, that had gone unresolved for decades. But for the first time, the Department of Education has adopted a policy for diversifying classrooms. We need to be bolder, but those changes would not have been possible were it not for a student-led movement known as Teens Take Charge. Right. And so the change is being driven not by the politicians, but primarily by the students in front of you. And we want to recognize them for honoring the heritage of Brown versus Board of Education, not only in word, but in deed. So thank you. And are we going to read the proclamation? Council, City of New York proclamation. In recognition of the student-led movement to integrate segregated schools throughout New York City, the Council of the City of New York is proud to honor Teens Take Charge for leading the way for equitable education. And whereas Teen ta Teens Take Charge had its launch event on April 28, 2017 at the Bronx Library Center with an initial group of six students. It has grown to more than 60 students from different high schools across the city, dedicated to tracking school segregation and proposing policies that promote integration by engaging audiences of more than 300 people. And whereas Teens Take Charge's mission is to build a student-led movement for educational equity in New York City, they have led four free events between students and policymakers on topics of educational inequity, pressing issues in the New York City public school system, inequities in the high school admissions process, and the legacy of Brown v. Board of Education. And whereas Teens Take Charge is designing a campaign around the enrollment equity proposal and is working with the Department of Education to address issues of student involvement and student representation across the department. The students plan to expand their student base, continue hosting community events that raise awareness through student testimony, and work closely with policymakers on solving issues of segregation and inequity in our schools. And whereas Teens Take Charge has impacted the conversation around the segregating schools and has paved the way for student leaders to be involved in bringing change to the school system. Now, therefore, be it known, the Council of the City of New York gratefully honors Teens Take Charge for their outstanding service and contributions to the community. Corey Johnson, speaker for the entire council. Lori Cumbo, council member and majority leader. Richie Torres, council member, 15th district, the Bronx. First and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, Councilmember Torres, uh, Councilmember Lander, and Councilmember Rosenthal, and every single elected official, um, Taylor, Adrian, and every adult who's helped us this far. Um, I think what really drives Teens Take Charge is the fact that an education is the civil and natural right of every single citizen of New York, and we have to make sure we improve the system because we're stealing these kids' future. In the next 20 years, we're gonna be the ones who are sitting in these seats and making the decisions that are gonna be made. All these voting things are gonna be the youth. And if we don't prepare our youth, we're not gonna have a strong future. And education is the way to prepare the youth. So we have to make sure our education system is equitable for all students, regardless of their gender, race, socioeconomic status, or orientation, so we can all thrive and make sure New York City is the greatest city in the world and will continue to be when we assume these leadership positions.
Quiet on the floor, please. Quiet on the floor, please. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. At this time, will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. If you do not have a council ID, you cannot be on the main floor of the chambers. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, it's all yours. Good afternoon, I'm Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and I am now calling to order the stated meeting for today, August 8th, 2018, and we are now going to begin with roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Ayala. Barron. Present. 